very much the case that Canada and Australia have been drawn into so-called defense of the United States on a contrived context, that contrived context being 9-11. Remote access. Somebody on the ground flying your plane. from a cave in Afghanistan and bin Laden and his laptop. These attacks came from the bowels of the CIA and the National Security Agency and the Pentagon. They were state-sponsored, false flag, synthetic terrorism, cynically concocted by networks whose cruelty surpasses even Hitlerian proportions. For your fight, you fuck. Somebody on the ground is flying your plane. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves. Away from the away from the guilt the guilty. <laughs> Islamic world did not, in fact, attack the United States. We know that from the 9-11 full examination. There was no orchestrated national attack on the United States, and, and the whole context of defending the United States is, is, is a lie. There is, we, we are participating with the United States in an aggressive act against the nation that caused no reason for being attacked. They were not uh, doing something to us and us having to defend ourselves. There's no question we are now participating in, a, in an act of aggression that a lot of people would argue is contrary to international law. Ситуация, когда американцы потеряли контроль над иракской и иранской нефтью, поэтому случилось 11 сентября, которое американцам развязало руки и даже вызвало сострадание у мирового сообщества. If we don't have any real enemies, it may be necessary to create them. This is how some people really look at that. Those people are very uh, aware of the profit potential of war, and they've written about it. But it's not just the profit potential. Although it's true that there is money to be made in war, and a large, if not the primary motivation for being, uh, getting the United States into the war in the Middle East is directly related to um, possessing and controlling the oil reserves and the oil supplies from the Middle East, and that translates into dollar signs. All of that is true, but in the process of looking at that, I think people have not noticed that there is another motive which has very little to do with profit, and it's a, it's a very driving motive for these same people. And that motive is world domination. It's not just money and profit, but it's political and social control over the world. And in the wake of 9-11, Islamic terrorists are allegedly present in different parts of the world. So the United States has to go after these terrorists. And they say, well, bin Laden is there, we have to go after him, or his group is there. And so that the, the, the pretext of 9-11 is essentially to, to intervene uh, militarily on the pretext that they're going after the terrorists. 
So they'll send in special forces into the Philippines. They'll send in special forces into Somalia, into the Sudan, into various countries where they are strategic interests. You have these very major crimes being performed by the United States government and its president. I just can't believe people will say that our president or the president of the United States would do that. That's a quintessential expression of the ruling group mind. Group mind is a set of regulating assumptions that uh, people hold in common and they never question, it's never examined, and they close out anything that invalidates them or is opposed to them. For example, a regulating assumption that the President of the United States and his advisors couldn't be criminals. It indicates the very fact that they cannot believe because they already believe the opposite and they assume the opposite that he couldn't have uh, been involved in such a major crime as war crimes and so forth so they don't want to believe it and they will in fact uh, attack people who suggest such a thing now, who are these people they're people who have sincerely accepted the 9-11 myth they really believe that there's bin Laden and al-Qaeda that this is a formidable organization that it wants to kill them, it has the means to kill them, it has the technical ability to kill large numbers of people in the United States, and that they're coming after you unless some force uh, prevents them from doing it. And that is, of course, the, the essence of Bush's appeal. It is the rhetoric of fear. This notion that Muslims are militarily trying to conquer the world is utterly ludicrous, and there's just no evidence for it. But <laughs> it's, it's pure you know, Pavlovian, sort of uh, appeal to the emotional unconscious that is incapable of rational thought. And we're prepared to buy this to protect us from uh, boogeymen and phantoms that don't even exist. We are being sold another bill of goods, another red scare here. Yes, certain members of Islam would like to do away with Western civilization. These are a handful of people. This is not a formidable enemy of numbers. This is a formidable enemy of the mind, of means, of disinformation. This public relations mind control industry has grown completely out of control and is now uh, fabricating completely illusory realities for the masses uh, through the media. So whole artificial realities have been generated for us. And I think 9-11 was the culmination of that, the biggest single uh, false reality uh, that was designed in order to manipulate uh, the public opinion that we've yet seen. It terrified people, subjected them to coercion, that is, it infantilized them and allowed the government to step in as a surrogate parent figure, which then uh, rewrote the script of, of their entire reality. It eliminated uh, civil liberties, created a, a quasi-dictatorial presidency in the U.S., and uh, enabled these wars of, uh, these resource wars of imperial aggression. Remote access. Somebody on the ground's flying your plane. We hate to interrupt you. We've just been told. A fourth explosion. A fourth explosion. The official story is what didn't happen. That's what we know for sure, because there are physical impossibilities. There are contradictions and absurdities and anomalies in the official story that just beggar description. We know that it's impossible that the president and commander in chief, on the day that he was told that his country was under attack, could continue to sit and read a story about a pet goat. This whole uh, behavior of government after 9-11 shows me that there must be people which brought it about. It must be very, very high up. I think so. It's a covered operation, a typical covered operation where you have patsies, false flag, uh, where you prepare everything to blame uh, different people from the people which really did the things. 
but they are able to influence the public opinion in order to say, well, the Muslims are our real foes which we have to fight. And it may be accidental that these Muslims are sitting on the oil.